Wherefore, as Adam and Eve were one flesh, so now also a man and woman become one flesh in a union of holy love for the multiplication of the human race. And therefore there should be perfect love in these two as there was in those first two. For Adam could have blamed his wife because by her advice she brought him death, but nonetheless he did not dismiss her as long as he lived in this world, because he knew she had been given to him by divine power. Therefore, because of perfect love, let a man not leave his wife except for the reason the faithful church allows. And let them never separate, unless both with one mind want to contemplate my son, and say with burning love for him, we want to renounce the world and follow him who suffered for our sake. But if these two disagree as to whether they should renounce the world for one devotion, then let them by no means separate from each other, since, just as the blood cannot be separated from the flesh as long as the spirit remains in the flesh, so the husband and wife cannot be divided from each other but must walk together in one will. But if either husband or wife breaks the law by fornication, and it is made public either by themselves or by their priests, they shall undergo the just censure of the spiritual magisterium. For the husband shall complain of the wife, or the wife of the husband, about the sin against their union before the church and its prelates, according to the justice of God, but not so that the husband or wife can seek another marriage, either they shall stay together in righteous union, or they shall both abstain from such unions, as the discipline of church practice shows. And they shall not tear each ochre to pieces by viperous rending, but they shall love with pure love, since both man and woman could not exist without having been conceived in such a bond, as my friend Paul witnesses when he says. 12. Words of the Apostle on this subject As the woman is of the man, so is the man for the woman, but all are from God, 1 Corinthians 11:12. Which is to say, woman was created for the sake of man, and man for the sake of woman. As she is from the man, the man is also from her, lest they dissent from each other in the unity of making their children, for they should work as one in one work, as the air and the wind intermingle in their labor. In what way? The air is moved by the wind, and the wind is mingled with the air, so that in their movement all verdant things are subject to their influence. What does this mean? The wife must cooperate with the husband and the husband with the wife in making children. Therefore the greatest crime and wickedest act is to make by fornication a division in the days of creating children, since the husband and wife cut off their own blood from its rightful place, sending it to an alien place. They will certainly incur the deceit of the devil and the wrath of God, because they have transgressed that bond God ordained for them. Woe to them, therefore, if their sins are not forgiven. But although, as has been shown, the husband and wife work together in their children, Nevertheless the husband and the wife and all other creatures come from the divine disposition and ordination, since God made them according to his will. 13. Why before the Incarnation some men had several wives? Before the Incarnation of my Son, however, certain men among the ancient people had several wives at once, as they wished, they had not yet heard the open prohibition of my Son who when he came into the world showed that the right fruit of this union of husband and wife as long as they live is the fruit manifest in the union of Adam and Eve, a union to be exercised not by the will of man but by the fear of God. For it is better to have this right union, by the arrangement of the prudence of the church, than to crave fornication, but you humans ignore this, and pursue your lusts not only like humans but like beasts. But let there be right faith and pure love of the knowledge of God between husband and wife lest their seed be polluted by the devil's art and divine vengeance strike them because they are biting and tearing each other to pieces and sowing their seed inhumanly with the wantonness of beasts. In such a case jealousy will torture them. Like a viper, and without the fear of God and without human discipline a defiled. Excess of seed will be stored up in them, and often, by the just judgment of God, this perversity of theirs will be chastised by having those born of them deprived of limbs and of health in their lives, unless I receive their penitence and show myself propitious to them. For if any shall call upon me in penitence for their sins, I will accept their penitence for the love of my son, for if anyone lifts a finger to me in penitence, that is, reaches out to me in penitence and groaning in his heart, saying, I have sinned, Lord, before you. My son, who is the priest of priests, will show me that penitence, for penitence which is offered to priests for the love of my son obtains the purgation of the sinners. Therefore, people who worthily do penance escape from the jaws of the devil, 
trying to swallow the hook of divine power, has grievously wounded his jaw, and now, therefore, faithful souls pass out of perdition and arrive at salvation. How? Because the priests at the altar, invoking my name, will receive the confession of the peoples and show them the remedy of salvation. So, in order to find God propitious, let them not contaminate their seed by various vices, since those who emit their semen in fornication or adultery render their children, born of them thus, unsound. How? Can he who mixes mud or ordure with pure clay make a lasting vessel? Likewise, will he who contaminates his semen in fornication or adultery ever beget strong sons? But many work in different ways in their inmost being, and many of these become prudent toward the world and toward God. And with these the heavenly Jerusalem is filled, deserting vice and loving virtue, they imitate my son in chastity and in great works, carrying in their bodies, as much as they are able, his martyrdom. But when I do not wish a person to have children, I take away the virile power of the semen, that it may not coagulate in the mother's womb, so also I deny the earth the power to bear fruit when by my just judgment I will to do so. But do you wonder, O oh human, why I let children be born in adultery and similar crimes? My judgment is just. For, since the fall of Adam, I have not found in human seed the justice that should have been in it, for the devil drove out this justice by the taste of the fruit. Therefore I sent my son into the world born of a virgin, so that by his blood, in which there was no carnal pollution, he might take away from the devil those spoils that he had carried off from humanity. 14. No human or angel but only the Son of God could deliver man. For neither a human being, conceived in sin, nor an angel, who has no covering of flesh, could save man, wallowing in sins and laboring under the heaviness of the flesh, from the power of the devil, but only he who, coming without sin, with a pure and sinless body, delivered him by his passion. Therefore, though human beings are born in sin, I nevertheless gather them into my heavenly kingdom when they faithfully seek it. For no wickedness can take my elect from me, as wisdom testifies, saying. 15. Words of Wisdom on this subject The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and the torment of death shall not touch them, Wisdom 3 1. Which is to say, the souls of those who embrace the path of rectitude with devout affection are aided by the celestial helper, so that, because of the good works by which in the height of justice they strive for heaven, the torment of perdition does not break them, for the true light strengthens them in the fear and love of God. But after Adam and Eve were driven out of the place of delight, they knew in themselves the work of conceiving and bearing children. And falling thus from disobedience into death, when they knew they could sin, they discovered sin's sweetness. And in this way, turning my rightful institution into sinful lust, although they should have known that the commotion in their veins was not for the sweetness of sin but for the love of children, by the devil's suggestion they changed it to lechery, and, losing the innocence of the act of begetting, they yielded it to sin. This was not accomplished without the devil's persuasion, for that purpose he sent forth his darts, and it did not come to pass without his suggestion, as he said, My strength is in human conception, and therefore humanity is mine. And, seeing that if man consented to him he would become a sharer in his punishment, he said again within himself, all iniquities are against most powerful God, since he is certainly not unjust. And that deceiver put this as a great seal on his heart, that man, who had consented to him of his own accord, could not be taken away from him. Therefore I took secret counsel within myself, to send my son for the redemption of humanity, that man might be restored to the heavenly Jerusalem. And no iniquity could withstand this counsel, for my son, coming into the world, gathered unto himself all who, forsaking sin, chose to hear and imitate him. I am just and righteous, not willing the iniquity that you, O oh human, embrace when you know you can do evil. For Lucifer and man each tried at the beginning of their creation to rebel against me and could not stand firm, but fell away from good and chose evil. But Lucifer laid hold of total evil and rejected all good, and did not taste the good at all, but fell into death. Adam, however, tasted the good when he accepted obedience, but he longed for evil, 
and in his desire accomplished it by his disobedience to God. Why this happened is not for you, O oh human, to investigate. Mortal cannot know what there was before the creation of the world or what may happen after the last day. But God alone knows this, except insofar as he permits his elect to know it. But that fornication, which is commonly done by people, is abominable in my sight, for I created male and female from the beginning in integrity and not in wickedness. Therefore those hypocrites who say it is lawful for them to commit fornication, with animal appetites, with whomever they wish, are unworthy of my eyes, because, despising the honor and loftiness of their rationality, they look to the beasts and make themselves like them. Woe to those who live so and persevere in this wickedness. 16. Blood relatives may not be united in marriage. I also do not wish the blood of relatives to be mingled in marriage, where the ardor of family love is not yet weakened, lest there arise shameless love in the relation of consanguinity, but let the blood of different families flow together, which feels no blood relationship burning within it, so that human custom may work there. 17. Example of Milk Milk that is cooked once or twice has not yet lost its flavor, but by the time it is coagulated and cooked the seventh or eighth time, it loses its qualities and does not have a pleasant taste except in case of necessity. And as one must not have sexual relations with a relative who is one's own spouse, so also one must abhor a sexual relationship with a relative related not to one but to one's spouse, let no human being join in such a coupling, which the church by its doctors, who established it in great responsibility and honor, has forbidden. 18. Blood relatives could marry in the Old, but not in the New Testament. Under the Old Testament people married their blood relatives by the precept of the law, but that was allowed because of their hard-heartedness, so that they might be at peace among themselves and charity be strengthened in them, so that these tribes would not break my covenant by dividing and mixing with the pagans in marriage, until the time came when my son brought the fullness of charity, changing the joining of relatives in carnal bonds into marriages with different people in bashful modesty. Thus, since the bride of my son, the church, now possesses in holy baptism a bond of my fear and righteous justice, let such joinings of relatives be far from her, for the embraces of a man and woman related by blood would be wickedly enkindled into shameless fornication and ceaseless lust much more than those of unrelated people. I am explaining this by this person, Hildegard, to whom this human operation is unknown, she is receiving this explanation not from human knowledge, but from God. What next? 19 A man should be adult to marry and take only a wife of marriageable age. When a male is at the age of strength, so that his veins are full of blood, then he is fertile in his semen, then let him take in lawfully instituted marriage a woman who is also at the age of heat, that she may modestly receive his seed and bear him children in the path of rectitude. 20 On the avoidance of illicit and lustful pollution. But let not a man emit his semen in excessive lust before the years of his strength, for if he tries to sow his seed in the eagerness of lust before that seed has enough heat to coagulate properly, it is proof that he is sinning at the devil's suggestion. And when a man is already strong in his desire, let him not exercise his strength in that work as much as he can, because if he thus pays attention to the devil, he is doing a devilish work, making his body contemptible, which is entirely unlawful. But let the man do as human nature teaches him, and seek the right way with his wife in the strength of his heat and the vigor of his seed, and let him do this with human knowledge, out of desire for children. But I do not want this work done during the wife's menses, when she is already suffering the flow of her blood, the opening of the hidden parts of her womb, lest the flow of her blood carry with it the mature seed after its reception, and the seed, thus carried forth, perish, at this time the woman is in pain and in prison, suffering a small portion of the pain of childbirth. I do not remit this time of pain for women, because I gave it to Eve when she conceived sin in the taste of the fruit, but therefore the woman should be cherished in this time with a great and healing tenderness. Let her contain herself in hidden knowledge, she should not, however, restrain herself from going into my temple, but faith allows her to enter in the service of humility for her salvation. But because the bride of my son is always whole, a man who has open wounds because the wholeness of his members has been divided by the impact of a blow shall not enter my temple, except under the fear of great necessity, lest it be violated, as the intact members of Abel, who was a temple of God, were cruelly broken by his brother Cain. 
21. A woman shall not enter the temple after birth or defloration by a man. So a woman, too, when she bears offspring, may not enter my temple except in accordance with the law I give her, because her hidden members have been broken, that the holy sacraments of my temple may be unviolated by any masculine or feminine pain or pollution, because the most pure virgin bore my son, and she was whole without any wound of sin. For the place that is consecrated in honor of my only begotten should be untouched by any corruption of bruise or wound, because my only begotten knew in himself the integrity of the virgin birth. Therefore, let a woman who breaks the wholeness of her virginity with a man also refrain from entering my temple while injured by the bruise of her corruption, until the injury of that wound is healed, in accordance with the sure instruction of church teaching. For when his bride was wedded to my son on the wood of the cross, she kept herself hidden until my son commanded his disciples to teach the truth of the gospel throughout the whole world, but afterward she arose openly and publicly preached the glory of her bridegroom in the regeneration of the spirit and water. So let a virgin, who is joined to a husband do the same, namely remain hidden with modest shame. Until the time which church opinion appoints for her, and when she has given herself over to the love of her husband in her concealment, let her come forth openly. 22. Those who have intercourse with the pregnant are murderers. I do not want that work of man and woman to take place from the time when the root of a little child has already been placed in the woman, lest the development of that little child be polluted by excessive and wasted semen, until her purification after childbirth. After that it may be done again, in rectitude and not in wantonness, for the love of children. Thus the human race may procreate by honest human custom, and not as foolish people babble when they claim it is lawful to satisfy their lust at will, saying, how can we contain ourselves so cruelly? O oh, humans, if you pay attention to the devil, he will incite you to evil and destroy you with his deadly poison, but if you raise your eyes to God, he will help you and make you chaste. Do you not desire chastity in your works rather than lust? The woman is subject to the man in that he sows his seed in her, as he works the earth to make it bear fruit. Does a man work the earth that it may bring forth thorns and thistles? Never, but that it may give worthy fruit. So also this endeavor should be for the love of children and not for the wantonness of lust. Therefore, O humans, weep and howl to your God, whom you so often despise in your sinning, when you sow your seed in the worst fornication and thereby become not only fornicators but murderers, for you cast aside the mirror of God and sate your lust at will. Therefore the devil always incites you to this work, knowing that you desire your lustfulness more than the joy of children. Here, then, you who are among the towers of the church. In your fornication do not accuse me, but consider yourselves, for when you despise me and run to the devil you do unlawful things, and therefore you do not wish to be chaste, as my servant Hosea says, speaking of the corrupted people. 23. Hosea on this subject. They will not set their thoughts to return to their God, for the spirit of fornication is in the midst of them, and they have not known God, Hosea 5 verse 4. Which is to say, evil people who do not know God hide the countenance of their heart, and do not do the various things that would bring it back to true brightness, that is, they do not see with clear eyes the things that are of God, but nurture evil in themselves, for, by the devil's persuasion, the breath of wanton impurity weakens the virile strength they should have and they cannot put good faith in God because the devil turns them away from the life of felicity.